Will Grogu tame the Mythosaur on the Mandalorian? Welcome back to Nerdist News. I'm Dan Casey, and today we're exploring one of the biggest questions about this season of The Mandalorian, and we do mean biggest. What is the deeper significance of the Mythosaur, and what role will it play in the season-long quest to reclaim the Mandalorian people's ancestral homeworld of Mandalore? Mandalore. Well, folks, we have a theory that ties into Mandalore, Mandalore, and much more. Mandalore. Specifically about how the key to taming this not-so-mythical beast could be hiding in plain sight, with seeds planted all the way back to Season 1. We're gonna break it all down for you in just a moment, but to do so we have to spoil the most recent episode of The Mandalorian. Now, if you prefer to read all about it, Michael Walsh has you covered over on Nerdist.com, but in the meantime, if you're averse to potential spoilers, fuel up your little jetpack and blast off while you still can. Okay, let's get into it, shall we? The Mandalorian's latest episode, Chapter 20, The Foundling, featured yet another confrontation with a colossal creature. The Children of the Watch's Children of the Watch are apparently being devoured at an alarming rate by a massive wyvern-like raptor. It will kill the Foundling if attacked. It has happened before when it has taken others. And this is apparently the price they're willing to pay for setting up their secret summer camp in Space Australia. Are you sure this is a good idea? After the Mandos undertake a daring rescue from the raptor's nest, this miffed monster mother chases our heroes away until she's summarily devoured by a massive space alligator, the same species of which the covert battled in the season premiere. Ah! That sequence in and of itself also calls to mind the season two showdown with the crate dragon on Tatooine. And while we've seen Din Djarin and company battle the likes of Moff Gideon, unscrupulous bounty hunters, and deadly droids over the course of this show, his most frequent foe seems to be massive monsters. With so many other enemies in the galaxy far, far away, why does the Mandalorian keep having elaborate encounters with gigantic hostile wildlife? Well, there are a few possibilities. Occam's lightsaber dictates that Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni just like writing and filming these sequences. <laughs> After all, the alien creatures that populate this universe are one of the coolest aspects of the galaxy far, far away. From a storytelling perspective, it also lets our heroes demonstrate their heroism and their martial prowess, both of which are particularly important to Mandalorian culture. Those brave warriors work best in clans, and taking down a massive deadly animal together shows they won't back down from any challenge. <laughs> Well, folks, these brutal battles might all be building to a monumental moment someday when a certain diminutive green Mandalorian foundling truly walks the way of the first Mandalore by taming a mythosaur. So far, the only Mandalorian who has not immediately resorted to violence against gigantic creatures is Grogu. Unless he saw like a really big frog, in which case all bets are off. Hey, spit that out. Back in Season 1, Grogu used the Force to stop a Mudhorn dead in its tracks. Grogu also stopped the Rancor during its rampage in the Book of Robert Fettuccini. And that encounter between Beast and Baby ended with them peacefully napping together, which is very fair, because that's what that show made me want to do after every episode. Why would I feel insulted? Now, taming a wild beast rather than killing it as a trophy might not seem very Mandalorian-like on its face, but that's exactly why Grogu might be special. According to Mandalore, Mandalore's founder, the first Mandalore, Mandalore, is said to have tamed the mighty Mythosaur tens of thousands of years ago. Mandalore. Some tales also say the Mandalore and other Mandalorians rode upon the animal's enormous backs. Kinda like what we saw in the Star Wars Holiday Special, except in that case, Boba was actually riding a creature known as Pars Ichthyodont, so there you go. Settle down. <laughs> anyway, taming the Mythosaur is a legend their descendants still speak of to this day. It's even immortalized in plaque form. And now we know that at least part of those legends are true. All of it. Okay, all of those legends. So that means mythosaurs are more like factosaurs or giant Cthulhu's. As we saw in chapter 19, one of them still resides beneath the mines of Mandalore inside the living waters. And the sight of this creature was so powerful, it broke through Bo-Katan's cynical candy coating to make her start believing this might be the way after all. This is the way. <laughs> The armorer said the creature's return would mark a new day for Mandalore and its people, and now that day might finally be arriving. But if the ancient tales are all true, one among them will need to tame the Mythosaur. So will it be the Mandalorians who fight every colossal beast they encounter? Ah! 
Or will it be the child who tames them by tapping into the unseen energy that surrounds us and binds us luminous beings together? Now, hopefully not the former, because as Hector pointed out in our recent Mythosaur deep dive, the Mandalorians basically tested themselves in battle against the Mythosaurs on Mandalore until they all went extinct. Now, of course, that is according to 2013's Bounty Hunter code from the files of Boba Fett, which does predate the current Star Wars canon. But for more Mythosaur mythos, make sure you check out that particular video, which I will link to in the description below. Pretty close, actually. Actually, pretty close to landing on it. Star Wars has a proud tradition of Jedi using the Force to either subdue or make deep connections with various animals. It helped Anakin to escape the arena on Geonosis. Ezra Bridger saved his homeworld of Lothal thanks to his bond with the mystical Pergil, those space whales that we saw alongside Grogu at hyperspeed in the Mandalorian Season 3 premiere. And Rey used the Force to heal a scared, injured Vexus in The Rise of Skywalker. Remember that movie? No. Yeah, me neither. Now, besides their founder, who might have also used the Force to tame his planet's mythic monster, Mandalorians revere another legendary ancestor that they also named Mandalore. I'm talking about Tar Vizsla. Tar is the only known Mandalorian to also be a Jedi, just like Grogu is now. He also forged the Dark Saber, a weapon that Mandalorians believe confers its wielder the right to rule the Mandalorian people. The wee baby Grogu does not possess the Dark Saber. His dad rightfully does, or maybe Bo-Katan does in a pinch. But Grogu might not need that weapon anyway, because much more impressive than a Vanta Black lightsaber would be taming the Mythosaur. And that is exactly what it would take to unite the Mandalorian people, to help them reclaim not only their homeworld, which was so brutally bombed by the Empire, but their pride as well. Because as the armorer tells Bo-Katan, the Mythosaur is a symbol that can be claimed by all the Mandalorian people. Over the course of this show, we've seen people like Din Djarin reconcile the Children of the Watch's hardline beliefs with the realities of the wider galaxy far, far away. We've seen Bo-Katan's bitterness and resentment over what she felt was a pack of lies begin to melt away when one of their foundational myths turned out to be true. And now Grogu has the chance to walk in the footsteps of their mightiest heroes. Grogu can unite the scattered people of his found family using the power of the Force and the way of the Mandalore. Besides, who wouldn't want to see Grogu riding into battle atop a veritable kaiju? Liars. That's who. Anyway, folks, there you have it. That's our latest theory about how Grogu might be the one to tame the Mythosaur and usher in a new dawn for the Mandalorian people. Of course, there's still that whole rising tide of fascism and that missing Moff Gideon they'll eventually have to contend with, but that's a problem for future seasons. Ah, fine. For now, though, tell us, what do you think of this theory? Who do you think will be the one to tame the Mythosaur? <laughs> Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.